This video is how I edit a story for YouTube. In previous videos, I've looked at cameras and I've looked at story structure. In this one, it all comes together. I'm going to use the second video in this series as an example of my workflow, so it really helps if you've watched this first. If you haven't, click the I in the top right corner, go watch it now. The content is relevant and also the structure of that video itself. I edit on Final Cut Pro, but the system doesn't really matter. It's the workflow and the way you lay it out that does. Hopefully you'll be able to adapt that to whatever system you use. But the first video I'm going to show you is not from the story video, it's from this one. In the first video about cameras, I explained that I record the audio for pieces to camera like this separately. The GoPro camera is picking up pretty good audio, but it's a distance away at the moment. So this microphone is going into a relatively inexpensive Sony voice recorder. Once the files from it and the GoPro are into Final Cut Pro, this is how I bring them into sync. This is the piece to camera with which I opened this video. This video is how I edit a story for YouTube. And the audio is all right, actually. In previous videos, I've looked at cameras and I've looked at story structure. In this one, it all comes together. So that's okay, and I think I, I, I had a few goes at doing that, and I thought, no, that's the best one. So I rode to a stop, and here I put Don't a backboard, backboard on. And that hitting my helmet was the sync point, because I'm also recording my audio on the little microphone that is here, uh, and that's going into my digital recorder. So I have the digital recorder track, which is here. Uh, and if you look, I can see there's my voice track going through this bit. And at the end there, that looks to me like the point where I hit the helmet for sync. So let's just listen to that. I'll put on a backboard. So, right. So we know that's a sync point. So I have to sync that point up with that point there. And you can see the spikes are quite obvious. So all I have to do is bring them close-ish together. That's close enough for now. And then zoom, zoom in. I put my... Pointer on the first one, cursor rather, uh, and zoom in a bit. And you can see I wasn't quite on it, so I'll move it so I am on it. Now let me just put it quite close, but not on, and you'll hear an echo. Hear that slight echo when I'm talking? I'll put on a backboard. But it's not quite right. And I'll put on a backboard. So if I move, and if I was to move it even further out of sync, it would be worse. Put on a backboard. So the worse the echo, if you can hear an echo, it's not in sync. So move that so they do line up, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be fine. And I'll put on a backboard. Only no echo. Backboard. So I could take that out and listen to the whole thing now. Go back to the main part of the piece of camera. Previous videos, I've looked at cameras. And that's how it works. That is really how I put things in sync. And at this point, I'll just trim off the bits that I don't want, start and end. So every time I've done a piece to camera and recorded it that way, that's how I've done it. This video is how I edit a story for YouTube. I've shown you that because on the telling a story video, I didn't really plan to do the recording. So I didn't have a separate microphone and recorder with me. All the audio is done in camera, but I'll work through the steps that I have, uh, I have used. The first thing I do is I get all the pieces to camera out and I space them out on a timeline like this. Put them together in roughly the order I've, I've recorded them. Put a bit of spacer in between. Work out which cut together quite well. This one seems to. And don't labour the element of it that is extraneous. Oh, and if this looks, feels and... So that seemed to work quite well together, so I've done that. I think I've done that twice, there's another one there. Uh, I can change it, obviously, this later. Uh, and I've put longer ones in where I think there needs to be thinking time. So I need to space out the whole structure. So that gets, and also I noticed there was one bit where actually I could illustrate something when I ran back and picked up the camera going across the river. So I've put that in there. So this is essentially my A-roll from, from start to finish. 
this is pretty much how the video is going to flow. But as you can see at the moment there, that looks, well, that was just incredibly dense. It's just me talking to camera, apart from that bit of punctuation where I went through the gate. Uh, but it's all in sync, it's all reasonable level, and this is the time to get your voice levels right. Um, and then move on to the next step. Now this is where I started putting in shots to cover some of the, the spaces. I worked out what would be a good opening shot, because your opening shot is this important. This video is how to tell a story for YouTube. Your opening shot is incredibly important, and I like that one. I know my titles are gonna go in that little bit there. And I just found shots that, that work with where I am. And I usually record these at the time, because I think, right, that's a little scene, so I'll record some walking, or in most cases, cycling shots to go over it there. Um, and this one where I'm jumping, I must have decided that that actually didn't work as a, as a jump shot, but the audio runs through with a bit of cover. And don't labor the element of it that is extraneous. Oh, and if this looks, feels, and sounds a little different to normal. There you go. So that worked as a bit of a covering shot. In this case, I've put a map in. In this case, I've put more of Maggie the dog. I I've really gone and found what pictures work best over those holes. And then I've, while I've been doing that, I've been thinking, where I need to open it out, where it needs to breathe. And that goes in the next step. And that's where I would add the music. And I'm doing it here. Just a few shots with some music to create a pause before. Now you can see these little white dots, they're keyframes, and they allow the music to rise and fall. So I tend to do that when I'm not speaking, and I'll do that in, uh, in gaps. So at the start, it's, it starts louder and then dips when I speak. This video is how to tell a story for YouTube. But I'm again getting into it straight away. I don't like long 15, 20 seconds of music at the start of my videos. It works in some cases, but I find on YouTube people just will skip. So that's my particular thing. Uh, that's a big gap for the titles. And what I've done there is I've actually looked, if I go to that bit of music in the browser, so we're going at the top of the screen now, you can see there's a change in the music happens around this point and you can hear it. And that diddle diddle dum, that to me sounded like oh, that's a good break that shows an end of something. So that's why I've made sure it synchronizes down here with the point at which my titles will come in. And so you get me finishing speaking just as that peaks. And we'll use that technique throughout the, throughout the laying of the music. Your story. Well, first thing to do and again, is didn't hang, and again, didn't hang around. So I've done something similar here get into it quickly. I just found an interesting phrase rather than a very obvious one because you don't want to keep repeating the same trick over and over again. I've gone for a different bit of music at this point and I've started it hard on the end here because I think we're actually changing a tone. Tonic structure that then goes on top. You might say to me, <clears throat> well, I'm going off on uh... So that allowed for an awful lot longer thinking time. And when I needed a longer bit of thinking time, I've used a different bit of music. And you can see I've keyframed it here so it raises up a little bit in that gap. Great. That's gonna wanna make the pictures. Uh, and and it just, I just work on, keep, keep going like that. But one thing I will show you is how I do it at the end, because uh, you want a good bit of music that has a good end if I go and show you this in the browser up here at the top left it has an end to it that was our first bit of music coming back in again so that's what i want at the end you might find useful until next time goodbye uh, so i started it here so we've got a good little bit another of... one has begun so you heard that at the start that was just a way to lead through to the end i'm bringing back the music that i began with towards the end 
Uh, and this is an edit that just happened to work. You can spend a lot of time trying to find the right point, but as long as the volume is low enough, um, if I was to mute myself, this is probably a rubbish edit. Yeah, it jumps. But when it's behind... Carrying the coffin of their loved one, or their workmate or friend, up here. You hardly notice it. You hardly notice it when it's behind me speaking. Uh, but you do notice it when you get a nice back time from the end. Now the purple things have appeared, what are they? The purple things are my titles and my uh, idents. So that's... Well, first there we are. This is what I did at the start. Uh, these things They're are the my name supers. Um, Maybe something's going on a long walk or a long so That kind of thing. Now I've been asked where I got some, of, where I get some of these things from. These things like uh, Loch Shiel, Stronti and what have you, these are call outs. And you buy them. They are literally plugins that you buy. Made my titles through this. You just drop your logo in and you've got lots of different sorts of titly things you can have, title effects. And they're pre-made really. There's very little to do. And I'll show you how you use those. You just need to use this part. That's part of the inspector. So I've put my own um, sort of media, which is my own little uh, name on Twitter, but I could change that from Twitter there to Snapchat and it'll be on the screen of Snapchat or I can change it to Facebook or you get the idea. Instagram, which is the two I use. Uh, put it back to Twitter. There we are. And that is all pre-made. I don't actually have to do anything with those. I can't help feeling that this video is somewhat out of place on my channel, but I was asked how I make the videos, and really all three videos were needed by way of explanation. I will most certainly get back to the main content, which is adventure cycling and adventure swimming. These three little videos that have been a digression have only actually been extras to the main thrust. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. Bye.